Hey tech heads, Fina here. I'm back and I have exciting news for you. The electric future of the legendary Peugeot 3008 has just been revealed. The new E3008 brings revolutionary changes. An all new futuristic body design, an upgraded interior packed with high tech gadgets, and of course, a next generation electric drive. I know many of you have surely been awaiting a fully electric version of the popular 3008. So what do you think? Are you as curious as I am to see how Peugeot has done with the electric transformation of the brand's flagship? Let's take a closer look at this electric marvel together. The new E3008 delivers something extra. The body of the E3008 has a dynamic SUV fastback silhouette that I personally really like. It combines elegance, spaciousness, and efficiency, probably thanks to its aerodynamic shape with a low air drag coefficient of CD 0.28. Of course, Tesla Model Y's CD of 0.23 is still a bit far off, but I would say that's okay. The car's bonnet is adorned with a subtle but unmistakable emblem that proudly proclaims that this bad boy is purely electric. Not to mention those LED headlights, they are integrated into a narrow strip above the bonnet, which adds to the car's panache. The rear, on the other hand, impresses with a floating spoiler that helps with the aerodynamics. And those 19 or 20 inch wheels, oh, I would say they're just beautiful. Who wouldn't want to get behind the wheel of this beast and experience the thrill of its electric motor for themselves? Well, don't you wanna go for a ride? <laughs> What do you think of the design? I think Peugeot really did a good job here, didn't they? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But now let's go inside because that interior looks absolutely gorgeous. As soon as you get behind the wheel, the modern floating 21 inch HD panoramic screen, which is slightly curved towards the steering wheel is sure to catch your eye. I have to say I'm very interested to find out whether it'll actually be easy to see over the steering wheel. Do you have any experience with the Peugeot panoramic eye cockpit? It looks quite high tech. Unfortunately, the 21 inch screen will only be in the GT version. In the standard versions, it will be two 10 inch displays. Yeah, too bad. The cabin also looks nice thanks to the ambient lighting and the materials used look premium, except for, you guessed it, black glossy plastic. Wonderful. Now I have the same direction selector in my EC4 as is in the E3008. I don't love it, but I guess Stellantis can't make another one. And there is also glossy black plastic around it, so that will immediately be tarnished and scratched up. But it looks so nice in product photos, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. So yes, hey, black glossy plastics. I really don't want them in my car. They are of course also on the center console, right where you put your hands, right next to those really nice textiles. Wonderful. The ergonomic front seats look really great and I'm looking forward to trying them out. In the center section is the iToggles panel, fully customizable touch sensitive buttons that can be programmed to provide quick access to 10 of the user's favorite functions. So calling your favorite contact, starting navigation to frequently used destination, setting the ideal air conditioning temperature, tuning the radio to your favorite station and so on. Do you guys still listen to the radio, by the way? I hardly ever do anymore. There's just too much talking for my taste and way too many commercials. Which brings me to today's video sponsor. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. We actually don't have one today. But if you'd like, you can become one by sending a super thanks. Anyways, on with the E3008 interior. There are new buttons on the steering wheel, touch buttons, but they are set to activate only when pressed to prevent unwanted touch activation. Yeah, okay, but we all know they'd be better if they were just the normal ergonomic buttons. Also, why are they glossy black? Do you know what these will look like after a few rides? Ah, there's a similar black gloss on the Volvo EX30, and after a vial of use, it just looks rough. So a sad little thumbs down for me behind the wheel. The interior of the Peugeot E3008 looks perfect in photos, but I'm not sure it will be such a hit once it's in regular use. But we'll see. What do you think? Do you think this interior would hold up in a day-to-day -day commute? 
And now the technical tidbits. The E3008 is based on a modular STLA medium platform designed specifically for electric vehicles. This means that a battery with a capacity of up to 98 kilowatt hours can fit between the axles. That means an insane range of up to 700 kilometers on a single charge. Don't worry, of course, it's WLTP in the TEL or test energy low variant. So you'd have to work very hard to achieve that range in real world conditions. But the 520 kilometers of real range is still pretty great, isn't it? Versus the weight, with the 98 kilowatt hour usable battery, it's 2100 kilograms, which is 200 kilograms more than the standard version weighs with a 73 kilowatt hour battery and 150 kilograms more than the all wheel drive version weighs with the same battery. The 400 volt battery charges quickly thanks to active liquid cooling and thanks to DC charging power of up to 160 kilowatts, it can be recharged from 20 to 80% in about half an hour. That's pretty nice. For AC charging, onboard chargers of 11 or 22 kilowatts are available. So at last, another car with the option of a 22 kilowatt AC onboard charger. Thank you very much. The E3008 also supports the V2L 3.6 kilowatt function. So well done, Peugeot. So what do you think of the Peugeot E3008? Do you want to know more about it? If so, definitely be sure to subscribe. I am also preparing a comparison of the individual versions, their dynamics and other interesting parameters. I personally find this new electric SUV to be a nice combination of style, space, range and equipment with a few small compromises as is par for the course. It is a pity that sales won't start until the first quarter of next year, 2024, but until then, we can at least see the new Peugeot E3008 in photos and look forward to the first test drives. I hope you enjoyed this quick look. Let me know in the comments how you like the E3008 and also if you want to know more about it. And if you want to support the creation of more videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and possibly drop a super thanks. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.